Hey Hodies, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today I'm going to be depotting and rearranging some of my Pat McGrath palettes. So I know that this could be triggering and traumatizing to some of you. I understand that these are very expensive eyeshadow palettes, but I did pay my own hard-earned money for these and because I did that, I can do whatever I want with them. If you happen to be new to my channel, my relationship to the brand Pat McGrath, just as a consumer, not as like a content creator or anything like that, is a little bit fraught. And what I mean by that is just the brand used to be something that I was really invested and interested in. And I feel like the brand has lost its way. And I used to be really precious about the brand. I used to be very like into the brand, a stan of the brand. I used to like buy every release. I at one point think I had eight of the mothership palettes or seven. I'm now down to six, but we're going to go down to four. So I chose three of my eyeshadow palettes. I'm going to make myself a palette full of the special shades. Before we get too far into this, I did utilize Cat of Kitsch Snitch as a resource, she has done the same thing, so I'm just kind of following her lead. The reality of the situation is we might lose some eyeshadows during this process. This process might not go 100% smoothly, and that's okay. But let me show you the palettes that are getting demoted, I guess. Of these palettes, this is the one that we are going to turn into the Franken palette. This is Mothership 5. Now, the reason that I have chosen this palette, I think this is a really good palette, you know, from start to finish. I like the color story. This is my oldest Pat McGrath palette in my collection, and the mattes are not my favorite mattes to begin with from Pat McGrath, and these ones are even harder to work with than what I remember, and so I think the mattes are turning. I love all four of these baked shades, so I would like to save them <laughs> and continue using them because they're my favorite part. The whole reason I don't end up using them is because they're in this palette that I just I don't want to use, so I'm hoping by making my own palette that I get more use out of it. Any of the shades that I depot that I might want to keep, so any of the ones from this side, I might keep them because I do like this bronze shade up here because it's like a nice bronze. Anyway, this is going to be our base one. So we're going to have to start by removing these six shades over here. I also have Mothership 2. From this palette, the only shades that I'm really concerned about saving for myself are these three shades in the bottom right hand corner over here. I will try to save these two shimmer shades but I'm not going to be putting them in the Mothership palette. I'll just put these with my singles because I like these two shades. But if I happen to like mess them up or break them in the process I'm not going to be too heartbroken about it. I, I'm not worried about losing any of the mattes in here but I'm not depotting all of them. So basically what's going to happen is these three shades I'm going to depot first and foremost. My test shade will be this one. I'm not super into gold, so me losing this, if I happen to break this shade while I'm like in the depotting process, to use it as a tester shade is probably the best way for me to utilize it because I'm not going to be heartbroken if I happen to lose it. It's not that this palette overall is a bad palette. I like it. Same thing. I like these shades over here. Every time I use this palette, I think I do some beautiful stuff with this. I have matte blacks that I like. I have matte browns that I like. And I could use any other shimmer shades, but most of the time I'm just using these shades with the two mattes, but I'm not using the whole palette. Because I'm not using the whole palette, I don't think of it. So I'm hoping that by getting these three out of here and into one palette, that I will be a little bit happier with that overall decision. Finally, we have Midnight Sun. Now, of my Pat McGrath palettes, this is probably one of the ones that I like the most as is. I really like this color story. I love grudgy greens. I love reds with greens. I know that that sometimes reads Christmassy, but like this is a really good color story for me. I'm hoping to save this copper shade, this blue shade, and then also this shade down here. So probably again, to make sure that I'm continuing to depot them correctly, I'm willing to depot this one first to make sure I remember, you know, muscle memory that I know what I'm doing. I am not too concerned about any of these shades. I've heard from other people who have depotted their Pat McGrath palettes that the mattes are pretty crumbly, pretty easy to lose in this process. Luckily, those are not even something that I'm even remotely after during this project. I think I'm in the clear there. First things first, let us go back to Mothership 5. 
and start working on it. I have my tool here. As I understand it, these shades are baked and so there's like a mesh situation underneath them. I've never tried to depot something like that before. These are just regular pans so I just need to get my tool around the edge and try to like pry them out. That's my goal. Kat said that she did about three minutes of the hair dryer on the other side to get heat. Most of the time when you're depotting something it's, it requires some form of heat so I have a hair dryer nearby. I know that some people use hair straighteners. Some people I don't know there was that brand that you know fell out of favor that tried making that one device that was specifically for depotting anyway I have my hair dryer that's gonna be really noisy so I'm just gonna do that and fast forward through that bit for you okay I just did that for three minutes the palette is roasty toasty so I'm just gonna depot these the goal is not really to save these I'm gonna like you know, try my best to not, you know, ruin them, but. I feel like mine didn't get hot enough, so I'm gonna go for another couple of minutes. The reason that we apply the heat when we're doing this is so the glue holding the pans in melts a little. My problem, anytime I've tried to depot anything before, not just like <laughs> these Pat McGrath ones, is I always have trouble finding an in on the side of the pan. I'm wondering if I need to... Ha-ha! Again, I'm not worried about the mats, so that's totally fine. Here's what I'll say. Everything so far has been kind of just as described to me. The mats were really hard to get out. Like the second any pressure would get on the outside of the mat shades, they would crack immediately. If you are trying to depot these for any reason, then I would say hopefully you're not doing it for the mats because the shimmers all came out okay. I only damaged the one, but that was my own doing. So these technically are still completely usable. I can throw them into a magnetic palette. I might do that with some of them, but I don't know. I might also, you know, start using these as highlight shades. I don't, I don't really know. I can make my decision about those later. What I'm gonna do is just set this aside and I will clean this up after I depot the other shades and then I'll clean this up and then we will put those shades in. That's the plan. So for this palette, I'm only really looking to get those shades out and I might try to get these two shades out. But we're gonna start with the baked shades because those are the ones that I'm going after and they're the more important ones. Since there's no pan to go around, I feel comfortable kind of digging into here. So remember I said I don't really care about the gold shades. I just wanna go in and see like what we're working with as far as this goes. Oh. Okay, so there is a plastic bit. These shades are in fact baked, so they have that like mesh bottom. So I need to just get on the edge of that plastic and Okay. All right. So again, kind of just as promised. That was much, that was, that's very easy to do. I'm feeling much less trauma. Okay. Let me get the rest of these out. 
It's interesting because these don't feel... Like, I was expecting them to be more fragile because they're almost... They almost, whenever you use them, are so flaky and feel really loose. But I think that however they're, you know, manufactured actually makes them a lot more malleable than the other shades. All right. Okay. Also, I do want to like check in here just like a little bit emotion wise. Surprisingly, I am not having any issues doing this. I'm going to try to depot these even though I wasn't really focusing the heat on them. I do like those two shades. So let's see if I can get them out since no one's going to really want this palette when I'm done with it. But yeah, I thought maybe that well, I thought that maybe that once I started, I might like want to backpedal and like feel maybe Oh my god, Tom. Maybe I'd feel like, I don't know, some kind of revert back to how I at one point felt about the brand, but that is just not the case. I'm gonna heat up the back of those a little bit and try to get those out too. This one really fought me. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know if it was just like glued in there better than the others, but I have it out, I'm gonna save her. See if I can get this purple one. Okay, that one didn't give me as much trouble as the gray one. This palette is done. Cool, okay. Okay, and so in this palette, I'm just concerned about the special shades over here. Again, I'm gonna do this gold one as just another test. All right, we're getting somewhere. As a heads up to anyone who might be wanting to try this, whenever you're doing these shades, just know they're gonna bend, but so far I haven't had like anything shatter. All right, that wasn't so traumatic. Let me just tell you, I'm feeling like freedom in this. So what I'm gonna do and speed you through with music is going to go back to the one that we are refilling. I'm going to try to clean this up as best I can with some isopropyl alcohol and uh, then we will start gluing things back in. I cleaned this up the best I could. So next, what I'm gonna do is glue my new shades that I wanna put in here, in here. So instead of using like super glue, because when you look at the bottom of these, that's the product. So I wanna use something that would be eye safe to apply them. That's what Kat did. And I think that's a really good idea. I kinda wanna figure out the layout of things here. I think that looks like a pretty good layout. So I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to do them like that. Seems fine to me. The shade right here is kind of cracking. I wonder if it's because it's cooled down. It's a little less malleable. 
but it's kind of pressing back into form. But I'm just gonna take my lash glue and I'm just going to like apply it in here and on the bottom of the plastic and I'm just gonna set it in here. I'm just gonna, you know, press it down in. So far, so good. So I think to do like a, a test, I'm just gonna like tip it over and see if anything falls out. Okay, so to be quite honest with you, I probably wouldn't travel with this anyway because I know that I have like rearranged them. But I'm gonna clean it up one more time and then I have one last little thing that I would like to do. So that's about as cleaned up as I'm going to get it. Something that I will just be honest with you that might not be picking up on camera. Trying to get some of the pans out, I did like nick up the plastic a little bit. That doesn't really bother me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the top with alcohol. And I'm going to get a nail polish. And I'm going to do like a nail polish top coat on top of this to make it just even more my own little thing. So I'm gonna like, there's like a mess of just glitter and paper towels around me. I'm gonna clean that up and then I'm going to do that. Yeah. That's it. That's what it looks like. Obviously, this is still drying, but I'm very pleased. I'll let you know about how I feel about painting it, but honestly, it's going to help me identify it as the one that I is mine, the one that I made. And because I redid this, and these are a lot of beautiful single shadows that I now just have in a 10 pen palette. Right now, I'm doing this thing where I'm kind of doing like a palette elimination situation. I will link that in the cards and down below for you to check out in case you don't know what I'm doing with my eyeshadow palettes in a larger project. I'm tired by the time I was wrapping this part of the video up. But what I'm trying to say is I'm not keeping this Pat McGrath palette that I just made out of my project. So it was in a like isolation box with all of my other eyeshadow palettes but I'm going to bring it into the fold because I'm now viewing those as like 10 singles. So I'm going to put that back in my regular drawer. So I wanna see how much I use them now that I have them in this new eyeshadow palette that I made and configured. I'm hoping that I want to use them more. Anyway, I don't know if you found this helpful if you were looking to depot your Pat McGrath palettes, but again, quickly, the mattes are kind of unsavable. The special shades were really easy to get out. They were, they did tend to be a little more fragile after they cooled down, after the heat cooled down, but they were really easy to pop out. They were really easy to put in. The lash glue did it. it I think this was a worthwhile project for me. A couple of final thoughts that I didn't include last night. If you do end up depotting and rearranging your Pat McGrath palettes, I wish you nothing but luck. Godspeed. I hope you can get over the emotional thing that might be tied to it, whether the emotions are tied into the amount of money that you spent on it and you're not feeling like you're getting good use out of it. So you're depotting it so that you think that you'll get the use out of it that you paid for it. Or two, if you happen to feel the same way as 
me about the brand and you're feeling like emotional going through it because you're like feeling some kind of way about damaging something from a brand that you either currently like or used to really like, it's okay. And I think that you might find it cathartic to do a little bit of damage, but also make it something that feels more useful to you. And finally, my final thought that I leave you with, if you happen to be a Pat McGrath stan, and you watch this video and for some reason you're upset with me because I'm ruining the sanctity of the brand of Pat McGrath. Let me just remind you that <laughs> makeup brands don't care about us. They don't care about me, the influencer. They don't care about you, the consumer, uh, your well-being. They don't care about you as much as you care about them. So I don't think it's a good idea. I think you should do some self-reflection, work on your fandom. I definitely have brands that I like more than other brands. I'm not trying to tell you that you're not, you shouldn't favor one brand over another. But I, let me just remind you before you like go ride hard, die hard, stand in my comment section, this brand wouldn't do that for you. They wouldn't come into someone else's comment section, someone who's bullying you and say, don't bully our consumer, don't bully our customer. They would never do that for you. So just keep that in mind. Keep that straight as you navigate this beauty space. Okay. I'm going to send you back to my sign off. Again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you like it so it gets into the eyes of more people. And I'm also on Patreon.com if you'd like to support me that way. I'm on Instagram and you can vote for me for Best of Pittsburgh. I'm nominated for Best YouTube Account. All of that is in the description box below. And I will see you in a video very shortly. Remember to follow your host and you will find me. I'll see you in a video very soon. Bye-bye.